Hey guys, Vincent here, and today we're gonna see the famous fish roll. Now, I really don't like the way it's being taught out there, as in just put your feet into the ceiling and then press on your hands. There is a very essential mechanic component at play, and we're gonna see it today. Before we start, make sure that you have warmed up your neck. And I'm gonna talk you through a series of priming drills, so to make, just to make sure that you have the basics sorted. Obviously, if you're a bit more advanced, you don't need that, but it's always a good thing to wake up with, warm up with. Um, so we're gonna start sitting down, and we're just gonna go for a couple of candlesticks. And already, it's, like it's going to be important for what comes later. We're going to be paying, paying attention to the angle in our hips. See, there's a difference between this candlestick here and one where I try to tuck my chin a bit more to stay a bit straighter, which means I'm trying to open my hips a bit more. There. I want to have a lengthened line. And on the first version, I'm a bit more lazy. My feet go overhead. And like this, this is not saying there's one right or wrong version. There are two different ways of approaching the candlestick. And I would say some of us are gonna find the lengthened version a bit more spicy, as in a bit sore or constrained in the neck. And if that's your case, I invite you to forget about that. More importantly, I want you to keep this in mind because we're gonna start with the smaller version, which is easier before trying to go nice and long. Eventually, this is our aim, because the fish was gonna go better if you do that, if you're just lengthened this way. But at first, you need to understand the mechanics, and this is gonna happen through the first version. Just to make sure you're fully warmed up, we're gonna go for a couple of shoulder rolls. So from the candlestick, we're gonna bring one foot and then the other foot down, and sit back up. There's so many variations to do that. Obviously, I invite you to play with what you already know how to do, if you do. If you don't, I invite you to check the tutorials I have for free on my YouTube channel. Now, to understand really what's happening, I want us to bring our attention to a basic same side shoulder roll. And again, if you haven't seen the tutorial, check it out before we jump into this bit. But in the same side shoulder roll, I roll on the right shoulder, the right foot lands first. And there is a moment at which my belly button is going to be facing down. Now. And then I bring the second foot down. And from here, I can decide to go on my belly or to slide on my back. Now, notice how quick this belly button is facing down. The reason for that being I'm swinging my counterweight. It's very important to understand movement in terms of counterweight sometimes. I'm swinging both counterweights, my legs, this way. Therefore, my body doesn't have a choice, even if I'm trying to fight this, but eventually to bring the trunk, the sternum, the belly button towards the ceiling, towards the floor. So it goes. Like this. Now that makes sense, right? That's kind of obvious, duh, I know. Now, for the fish roll, we want to be able to slow down the actual roll that happens on the shoulder so that we can land chest first and feet last. For this to happen, therefore, we need to change the system of counterweights. More specifically, I'm gonna try to keep pointing towards the wall I'm facing initially with my feet all along as long as possible so that they provide me with the counterweight this way which eventually will allow you to roll on your chest first and therefore perform the fish roll. So here I'm gonna bring my feet to this wall and as I roll on my right shoulder I'm gonna have to extend my hips for this to happen. So I enter the candlestick, I bend my knees already. This is not the final shape, I'm aware of that. But you have to understand this first. Bend your knees, and as you're about to roll, extend your hips, which means bring your knees to the ceiling so that your feet keep pointing to that wall. 
And from there, we're gonna try to bring both hands here. And because we have a counterweight, we should have the time and the space to do that. One, two, three. I'm trying to keep my feet pointing this way. One, open the hips, place your hands. I'm gonna extend my hips here and this will give me the counterweight I need. Two row. If you have a hard time understanding what the neck is doing, revert back to the initial shoulder roll. The simple shoulder roll, where you want to be able to tuck the chin in and slide your skull on the floor smoothly. It goes here, I'm going to exaggerate the head movement to try to bring my chest to this floor. I don't have to on, in this roll, but I want you to ingrain the pattern. Now with this hand placement, this head movement and your intention to one, keep your feet this way and two, land on the chest first, you should be able to roll chest, hips, thighs, feet. One tip, having the legs like this first, a bit open, clearly bent, even though it's less graceful, it's gonna be easier. Eventually, we're gonna be straighter. And once you understood this tucked version, where the counterweights are a bit clear to understand or to feel, you want to try lengthening the whole structure, which means reverting back to the second version of the candlestick we've seen where the hips are clearly extended. Now, in that version, obviously, we want to refrain from bending the knees, which means we won't have this same counterweight, which means the head motion and the hand placement are gonna be way more important. So really practice the tucked version until you can be comfortable rolling on your chest and then your belly and then your thighs and eventually your feet. And once you have this smooth, then try to practice lengthening more and more the initial candlestick into your fish roll.